Hi, I am Kimberly and welcome back to my channel. If you clicked on this video, then you are looking for a way to stop living in the victim mentality. You're looking to take your power back. Well, you are in luck because as I mentioned in last week's video, I am a woman who gave my power away wherever there was an opportunity. I felt that I didn't have power in my life and I let this limiting belief control every aspect of my life. I have gone from that helpless, hopeless place to a woman who knows what it feels like to be empowered and to be taken on life from a whole new vantage point, one that I longed for for many years. I am here to give you what I have learned in this process of growth and to give you hope. Because if I can go from that little girl that I was for so many years to the woman that I've become over the last few years as I've matured even more, absolutely you can too. So if that idea excites you and fills you with hope and possibility of what can be, then subscribe in the link below because you want to be a part of this True Center community. This is the kind of content I will be bringing you continually. And the idea is to help you let go of those limiting beliefs that keep holding you back. Trust me, I've been there and I know. Also, if you have any comments you would like to share about taking your power back, even as a grown woman, then share in the comments below and let's start a conversation. So let's get started. If you remember last week in my video, I talked about a word that I had kind of fallen in love with over the last few years, and that word was empowered. And that word means to make someone more strong and more confident, especially when it comes to claiming their rights in their life. Now, I love this word so much because it encompasses who I want to be in my own life and in the world. To me, being powerful means basically three things. The first one is to be Kimberly and to live my truth, to come to the world as my authentic self. Number two is to move towards my goals and my dreams in spite of my fears. And number three is to have a positive impact on other people and to set an example for growth and progress, basically to influence people for good. Now that's my definition of power or to be powerful or empowered, but what your definition is may be entirely different and that's for you to figure out for yourself. But I would definitely look into that. What does it mean to be powerful to you? So there are eight steps that I can put my finger on that I did to become a more empowered woman. But before I begin sharing them with you, I do want to clarify something. I feel like the world thinks that power means one thing or to be empowered means one thing. And I think that as you go through these steps with me, you're going to find that actually to become empowered and to be powerful in your life is a little bit different than maybe you're thinking. It doesn't mean you're controlling everything. It doesn't mean you're, I have the power. It, it doesn't mean that. It means several other things that we're gonna cover right now. So with that aside, let's begin. Do you know the feeling when you sit down at your desk and you want to get some work done, but there is clutter everywhere and it's so hard to focus because it's just utter chaos. How is that different in your life? Think about this. I'm talking about cleaning up what's inside of you that is making you feel that lack of power in your life. These kinds of things are anger, resentments, frustration that your expectations are not being met. They absolutely suck the life out of you. When you are so focused on these very strong negative emotions, it's hard to feel powerful. In fact, it's impossible to feel powerful because they are taking your power away. Forgiveness and acceptance of those around you or the circumstances that aren't quite as you had hoped they would be will be such a huge empowerment for you because you're letting go of the chaos that those negative emotions were causing. This will be an ongoing process in your life because yes, there will always be something that isn't exactly how we want it. There will be somebody who hurts us. This will take some real focused energy and effort because these are negative emotions that control you. But I'm promising you that as you do this, you will become so much more powerful. The second thing I did to become more powerful is to start cleaning up my side of the street. What in the world does that mean? Let me explain. I can sit here all day and tell you all the things that you've done wrong to me, but what about my side of the street? When we dwell in a world where we know we, we need to fix things, that's a disempowering place. But when we start to fix those things, all of a sudden, we are starting to take our power back. 
It is very empowering to be able to ask somebody for forgiveness for something you did that you know was wrong. And by the way, this includes asking forgiveness of yourself. To become more powerful, you will need to take action in powerful ways. The easy thing to do would be just to let it slide, forget about it, and just let it go because it's over. It's water under the ridge, right? But no, you know in your heart that you have wronged somebody. And until you fix that, it will be very hard for you to feel powerful because that is controlling you. Whether or not you are forgiven when you seek to make amends with somebody is not the point. The point is you are stepping into your power. You are taking responsibility for your own actions. That is powerful. The next step, number three, is to gain some clarity. Because now that you've made space in your life and your heart and let go of the angst, the anger, the frustration, now that you have cleaned up the debris, get some clarity on where to focus your energies in the areas that will make the most difference and have the most impact in your life and in the lives of those around you. A great way to do this is through using practices such as meditation, journaling, prayer if you believe in God, or just getting out into nature where it's quiet, where all the voices, all the chaos is away from you and you can actually think and ponder and reflect and take the time to get centered. There is constant input going into our minds about things that we should be fretting over, stressing about, being angry about. How can we be a powerful force if we can't even find peace in our heart or in our mind? Life is going to take you for a ride no matter what. That's just the way things are. The world is not going to suddenly quiet down for you because you need a moment. No, that's not what's gonna happen. This is going to be something you have to take responsibility for. You will have to build those quiet introspective moments into your day and protect them with strong boundaries. I can tell you from my own personal experience that getting clear and taking the time to connect with that power that is available to me that is infinite and vast, so much more infinite and so much more vast than I could ever imagine, that has made all the difference. And that only comes when I make the time to connect. I can think clearly when the distractions are gone and I can listen to any promptings that I might receive and I can find the strength and the energy to act on those promptings. Which leads me to the next empowering step I took, number four. Of all the things I did to become more empowered, the one that stands heads and shoulders above the rest is this. I became more empowered when I finally let go of wanting to be the one to handle everything, to make everything work on my own powers. I am human, obviously, and my powers are limited. And who am I to think that I have all the answers, that I can handle my life the very best? I am fabulous, but I'm not that fabulous. Please hear me. The moment you begin to admit that you don't have all the answers and you don't have to have all the answers, you begin to take the help from the outside sources that are available to you. For me, the first one on that list is God. When I have the humility to admit that I need the help of something bigger, some power greater than myself, that frees up a lot of mental energy and I begin to learn that I have help, I can trust, I can begin to see that my meager efforts are magnified by the efforts of vast and infinite possibility. Now, if you don't believe in God, please, please don't check out right now. There are other powers out there, communities, organizations, nature, people that you admire that you can seek help from. You don't have to do everything and, and you won't be able to do everything. So be humble and accept help. We can learn from others and we can accept help from others. That is powerful. Number five, and this is very personal to me, but you may be able to relate. I became more empowered when I began to live free of addictive behaviors. Addiction is the fact or condition of being addicted to a particular substance, thing, or activity. Addictions come in a variety of flavors. It can be big things that we all know about, like alcohol or drug abuse. Um, it can be food addictions. You can be addicted to shopping, gambling. You can be addicted to pornography. You can be addicted to people pleasing. You can be addicted to gambling. You could be addicted to watching Netflix every day. It's anything you're compelled to do. An addiction, by definition, binds you. It binds you. It, it holds you. It controls you. So how can you be powerful if you're controlled 
I had to get very real about this because in full transparency, I found out as an adult that I am addicted to sugars and foods that my body turns into sugars. So that was something that when my emotions got involved or life got scary or crazy, my body craved certain substances in the form of sugars and that controlled me. So thankfully, I have been addressing this type of situation in my life with an actual program, a 12-step program. And there's 12-step programs for every kind of addiction you can imagine. I would definitely encourage you, if there's anything in your life that controls you, that you're compelled to do, that you, you know, you just, it just, you need it. Um, you might want to question that. And if you need help, then seek it because addiction is real and it will take your power away. Absolutely, 100% it will take your power away. All right, number six is to learn to enrich your mind. We live at such an exciting time in the world where we can learn virtually anything at any time, day or night. There's so much knowledge available for us. If you want to be empowered, learn about subjects that empower you and make it specific to your life pursuits. When I started learning about addiction, I found ways to recover from my sugar addiction. When I started learning about interior design, which I absolutely love, I started being able to know how to implement great design and how to actually make money designing. And I know that you've had circumstances in your life where you gained knowledge, which then went ahead and empowered you to do certain things. So seek learning. Always be prepared to learn and be open to growth and to progress. We can only progress when we know how. All right, number seven, you become more powerful when you are serving others and looking outward. When we take our eyes off of our wants, our needs, our desires, and instead look to see how we can lift others, help others, there's something very powerful about finding a need and filling it. That is using your agency to make things better. That is powerful. And number eight, the last one I'll be covering with you today, but oh, so important. Speak positively and with optimism. Have you ever noticed just how you can get the life sucked out of you by somebody who is either gossiping about somebody else or complaining about the world or whatever it is? This is a very disempowering behavior. Do any of you remember the Saturday Night Live skit called Debbie Downer? There would be a group of people talking and having a great time. And then this one out of nowhere, Debbie Downer, would say something so mortifying or bring up a topic that was so negative that the entire mood would change. Now, Saturday Night Live did a wonderful job of making this a very hilarious situation and they really milked it for all it was worth and they did a fabulous job. But there is a powerful lesson in that skit that they do. There is power in our words. We can lift people up or we can drag them down. We can lift circumstances up or we can drag them down. The choice is yours. To become more powerful, speak more powerful. Use your power and you will develop more power. My friends, I have given you the eight things that I did to become a more empowered woman. They're not easy. These are real steps where I had to take true, honest action. But remember, the goal is to get out of the victim mentality. The goal is to become more empowered in your own life. The, the change from who I was before, that broken child, that broken, needy victim, to a woman who can sit before you today and share and, and know that what I'm saying matters and to know that, that I can make a difference. And I hope it inspires you because you can have the power that you desire. You, you truly can. In the end, it will be important that you come to understand specifically what empowers you as a person because not everything that empowers me will necessarily empower you but i do feel that these steps i've given you will make a vast difference in your life so take the time to get to know what the things are that will empower you what things will disempower you my friends you will become powerful when you behave in powerful ways and let go of behaviors that make you weak so that's it for this week i truly hope you found this video impactful and empowering and if you did be sure and hit the like button below i can't tell you how much it helps the channel when you do and if you want to be a part of the true satra community a group of women who inspire each other and grow together well click the link below because we need women like you i'll see you next week bye if you enjoyed this video why not give these a try?